welcome. Will you please stand and join Julia Davis in singing a national anthem? Be seated. Welcome. Wel welcome Snowden parents, guardians, esteemed guests, staff members, and last but not least, the class of 22. My name is Mark Dykes, and I'm the administrator for grades 9 and 10 and the master of ceremonies for today. When I say these young men and women earned their diploma, I mean it. Please give them a round of applause. Just imagine being thrust into a global pandemic for almost two years. Their world changed in a matter of seconds. Their entire, their entire schooling got shifted to online. They were mandated to wear masks, and they had to stay at least six feet away from each other. The impact for some of these students was devastating. But as Maya Angelou would say, you may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I rise. Parents, guardian, esteemed guests, staff members, the class of 22 has risen. Welcome. Now I want to introduce our wonderful head of school, Ms. Raquel Martinez. Welcome. So when I was thinking about how to address the class of 2022, I relied on what I often do when I'm faced with an uncertain task. I asked, what exactly should I tell you all? Some folks urged me to tell you all what I wish I had been told at your age which is not that long ago. While others urged me to acknowledge the moment we find ourselves in and inspire you to move forward in a blaze of motivation and inspiration. Eventually, I realized that before I could even attempt to do all that, 
I had to remind myself of exactly who the class of 2022 is. I sat down and I looked through each and every one of your names. And the first word that came to my mind was growth. Many of you probably don't remember this, but we started our journey at Snowden together. You as eager ninth graders, and me as a brand new assistant principal at a new city. When I think back to four years ago, there are a few things that stand out. Jaren, where's Jaren? Jaren <laughs> buying, hold on, Jaren buying a 50 ounce rainbow slushy from 7 Eleven at 7 in the morning and dodging adults in the hallway. I remember Laura Lagual rolling her eyes after she was being called down to my office for the third time that week. I remember Jai timidly navigating a new school and trying to avoid getting noticed at all costs. And I remember Kai determined to do things her way no matter what. At the time, neither one of us knew what the world had in store for us. But instead of focusing on what has happened and where I hope you will go, I think it's first important to recognize a few important details of the class as you are now. We have athletes who have made it to the boys, baseball, and basketball finals while at Snowden. Yep. We have scholars with full rides to local universities. We have artists with works featured in mass art and other community organizations. We have leaders offering their time and talents to serve their communities. And we have international language learners with proficiency in Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, and French. When I think about you all as a ninth grade class and I see you here today, I cannot tell you how moved I am by the growth I have seen in you all as a class. Believe it or not, but you have each grown into a more confident, knowledgeable, and perceptive version of who you were when you started. So when I thought about what I wanted to share with you, this idea of growth kept coming up for me. Because you see, often we're so focused on where we started and where we want to go that we forget about all the small steps in, betwe in between, which is where actually life happens. Four years ago, I had no idea that I'd be addressing you today as your head of school. And all too often, people think that the time in between is forward motion. It is not. If there is one thing that I hope you all take with you today, it is that life rarely goes from point A to point B. And if it does, it probably is a very boring road. I really wish, really wish, Someone had told me that life is not the checklist we're often told that it is. That when life gets hard, there is no map, there is no manual to solve the problem or make you feel better. And that the adults are often just trying to figure it out as much as you are. It is in this spirit of growth that I hope to leave you with both a thought and a request that I hope you will take with you as you move on toward what I know is going to be an exciting path. The thought is innovation. For the first time, first time in our history, we have been propelled toward innovation. Life as we know it has completely changed. And while that can be scary, what a wonderful opportunity to create something new, something better. Those of us older than you are looking to your generation 
to define what American values will look like in the future. It is you who will determine how we will work, what issues we will fight for, and how we will hold people in power accountable. What an opportunity to finally change things that have been the same for far too long. Take advantage of that and commit to doing a better job than we have done. And now my request. I mentioned this at the Senior Awards Luncheon, and I think it bears reminding. As life continues to move you in different directions, I ask that you never forget to stop and give thanks. Take a moment today to literally stop and look around. Take stock of the village of family, teachers, and friends that are here with you today. These are your people. Thank them, hold them close, because when life gets hard, these are the moments that will remind you of exactly how strong you are. I have these people too, and they are the ones that I lean on when self-doubt, worry, and fear try to hold me back. I'm also lucky enough to have one of those people here today, Mr. Eugene Roundtree, who the former head of school, please stand, of Snowden International. In life, there are people who come your way and push you and see things in you that you did not see. Appreciate them, thank them, and hold them close. And so, class of 2022, my wish for you today and always is that you continue to move forward, that you reflect on the growth that you have made and you use those lessons to innovate and make the life of those around you better. Congratulations, class of 2022. I am so, so proud of you all. Please join me in welcoming our guest speaker, former Boston City Councilor, Mr. Tito Jackson. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, I'm from a Baptist church. That's not quite how we do it. So we do a little call and response. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We'll try one more time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Awesome. My name is Tito Jackson. Um, to those who don't know, I am not related to Michael Jackson. Um, so I just want, I know that was in here, I want to just clarify that and testify in church. Um, I want uh, to first acknowledge uh, the woman in charge at the facility that you are in. Um, this is a historic facility. This is Old South Church. 1669 is when this place started and they have been waiting for you. And I want to acknowledge one of the most dynamic leaders that we have in the city of Boston, uh, who actually just retired. Uh, let's give it up for the senior pastor here, Nancy Taylor. I don't know that she's been called this before, but she's a bad mamma jamma. Um, I want to welcome uh, all of the friends family. Let's give it also up for the staff. Let's give it up for the teachers and all of the individuals who made this uh, happen today. I want to acknowledge the head of school, uh, Ms. Mrs. Martinez. Let's give it up for her. I also want to acknowledge my friend uh, and a brother who is on the move. Uh, your former headmaster, uh, Mr. Roundtree. Let's give it up for him also. I want to give it up also for Mr. Larry Green, who was all up in my DMs making sure that I was here today and on time. And finally, I want to give it up for, let me get all this stuff right, 
the bomb, dripping, fresh to death, dopest, swag on 1000, class with all the flavor, on fleek, class of 2022. Did I get that right, class of 2022? So I want to share a little bit about myself, give you some marching orders, and uh, sit back down. Again, my name is Tito Jackson. I am born and raised in Roxbury, the berry but not the fruit, right in Grove Hall. Uh, I am blessed every day, though. I started my life at Boston Medical Center on April 11th, 1975. I was in the hospital for two months. And I wasn't in the hospital for two months because I was sick. Uh, I was there waiting to be adopted. You see, I was born to a 13-year-old mom who was assaulted. And so my life started in a very difficult fashion. Uh, but I live my life by one theory, which is the theory of grace. I got helped not because I deserved it, not because I was the cutest baby, absolutely not because I was the baby that ate the least. I got helped because I needed it. And that concept of grace is what helped me throughout my life. I was adopted by Herb and Rosa Jackson. My dad was a community activist, and he helped women, people of color, and folks from the city of Boston get jobs in buildings and in, in, in the trades. My mom is an uh, entrepreneur, and she had a daycare for 25 years and helped raise so many people uh, in this city. And ladies and gentlemen, we had, uh, I was adopted into an amazing family. Um, I have four older siblings, and I remind them on a regular basis that unlike them, I was chosen. They just had them. They chose me. Uh, and then also, I was uh, adopted into a family where my uh, mom and dad also adopted three additional kids. Um, I can recall not too long ago when I sat in the same place that you're sitting. And I was at Brookline High School and I wanted to go to Morehouse College. Anyone know where Morehouse College is? Okay. That's down in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's where Martin Luther King went. Anyone know how old Martin Luther King was when he went to college? How? Oh. 15 years old. And so I thought I was behind because I was 18. So I really, really wanted to go to Morehouse College. It's also a HBCU. It's a historically black college and university. And as you guys know, when you apply to school, there's a couple of things that you get. So you get this admissions letter, right? And when you get in, you're very, very happy. Well, then you also get another letter that you have to talk about with your parents, which is called your financial aid package. And I was not that happy because they gave me 1500 bucks to go to Morehouse College. So I did not actually attend Morehouse College. I attended another type of HBCU. I went to the University of New Hampshire, which is also an HBCU. It is a historically blonde college and university uh, where when I got there, the first day, and I don't know about y'all, uh, anyone in here have embarrassing parents? I, don't, I know they're here, but okay. I have embarrassing parents. The first day I got there, um, my parents began to unload all of my stuff. We brought it all upstairs. And um, I realized as we put stuff in my drawer that my mom did not think that I was going to college. She thought I was going to camp because she wrote my name on every item of clothing, including my socks, my shirts, as well as my shoes. And then my mom, one more time, before things got real, 
decided to embarrass me one, one more time. So um, I had a little granola right here. And mind you, I was in an all-male dorm. So there's all these guys there, right? And I got a little something in my mouth right here. Um, how does your mom remove stuff from your face? So in front of all these fellas that I just met, my mom walks down the hall and licks her thumb and wipes my face. And then, then things got real at the University of New Hampshire. We marched to a building called the Field House, where our school was about 16,000 students. So we actually marched to this room where there were about 4,000 students. And I was being cool, kind of rapping with my friends. And I backed into a room, and I turned around, and I only saw one other black face. You see, the University of New Hampshire, with those 16,000 students, only had 54 black students. And I'm going to stop right here and let the class of 2022 know the lesson that I learned that day. And that lesson is the Calvary is not coming. No one is coming to save you but you. All of the leaders, all of the doers, all of the people who we need to make change are in this room right now. You are the superheroes, the super sheroes that we need in this generation. So back to University of New Hampshire. Instead of allowing only 54 black students to stay at the University of New Hampshire, we formed an organization, and I'm gonna, I have to say it loud into the mic. It was called the Black Student Union. And that's the biggest name that we could come up for seven people. But those seven people changed the course of that university. We put forward, and that's a good applause line, go right ahead, go ahead, I'm not gonna stop you. We put forward a list of demands. We demanded that there were more non-athlete students of color at the University of New Hampshire. We demanded that there were more women of color. I put that one there. There were not that many sisters there. We demanded that we have an Office of Multicultural Student Affairs. And we demanded that we had a pre-orientation for students of color. And understand, this was only young people. We had no adult support at that time. And I submit to you today, class of 2022, that now in 2022, instead of in 1993, when there were 54 black students at the University of New Hampshire, now we have over 600 students of color at the University of New Hampshire. The Calvary is not coming. All of the leaders, all of the doers, all of the folks who are going to make things happen are in this room right here, and I would submit to you, are in this class of 2022. Y'all are the best looking. Y'all are survivors of COVID. You guys are the strongest yet. You were the best ever. You were the smartest and you are the most dynamic. And I'll close out uh, with my theory on life, and it's not long, and it's simply that we all will leave here someday. We don't get out of life alive. And when we leave, we get a headstone. And on the headstone, there are three really important things. There's your name, the date you came here, and the date you leave. But the most important thing on that headstone is the dash. And that dash is a question mark about what did you do while you were here? What is new, what's different, what's better from the time that you were here? How many people did you help? 
How many doors did you hold open for those folks who come behind you? And I would submit to you that the amazing work that you have done at Snowden has prepared you to make an indelible mark on the city of Boston, on the United States of America, and on the world. And I'd like for the class of 22 to stand with me. I get this. Uh, first, um, Ms. Rodriguez, I just need to get a selfie. Give me one second. And I'd like you to repeat after me, class of 2022, because you guys are the ones. Repeat after me, I am one. Okay, y'all don't sound like one. Y'all sound like half of one right there. Repeat after me, I am one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And what I can do, I ought to do. And what I ought to do, I will do. I want you to take your right hand. Everybody know the right hand, right? We got the right hand. And because the class of 22 is the best ever, the bomb, dripping, fresh to death, dopest, swag on 1,000, that's never been heard in this church before, class with all the flavor, and on fleek, I want you to go ahead and move your arm backwards and give yourselves a pat on the back. And let's give it up for the most amazing class ever. The class of 2022 at Snowden High School. You can do better than that. One more time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give it up for the class of 2022. Let's give Mr. Jackson a round of applause. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. So please join me in welcoming the valedictorian of the class of 2022, Hazel McLaughlin. Again, again? That was a hard act to follow. No, you're all burning up, so I'll keep it brief. <clears throat> it has been a long four years, and I won't lie, they've been hard on all of us. Freshman year went by in the blink of an eye, and we were hardly a year, what? oh, right. We were hardly a year and a half into high school when quarantine kicked us all to the curb. It was a difficult position, and we all handled it in different ways. But hard as those days were, they finally passed. It doesn't do to dwell on the past, so I'm grateful that we were able to return for a final year together, building the bonds that COVID denied. Over the past year, we have come together to repair our fractured school community and return to a semblance of the experience that we all expected. For most of us, this is where our paths diverge. We all have our futures laid out in front of us, and this may be the last time some of us meet. Still, I wish you all the best as you go forward. To Mr. Dykes and Ms. Darius Jean, you were there when we needed it and helped us navigate the obstacles of high school life. To all our teachers, you gave us guidance and the walls to bounce ideas off of that we always needed. But as I think back, I think my friends most of all who gave me the strength I needed to stand here today. And I admit, in my darker moments, I sometimes question how I might have used academic effort to bury my worries over these past few years, but when I look around me now, I have no such fears. To be here with all of you, every effort was worth it. And as I stand before you, a proud young woman, I believe I speak for all of us when I say it's been a pleasure doing business with you. <laughs>
can. So I'd like to welcome uh, the grade 11 Chinese class accompanied by Sue Palin. teachers, friends, and graduates. At Stony International School, we learn Chinese, Japanese, French, and Spanish. To celebrate graduation class of 2022, we would like to present you a Chinese song called Xie Xie Ni. Xie Xie Ni means thank you. In Chinese, the song says, we're thankful for everyone's effort. Can you hear me now? You want me to say it louder? Ni hao, parents, teachers, friends, and graduates. At Sonning International School, we uh, teach Chinese, Japanese, French, and Spanish. To celebrate graduation class of 2022, we would like to present to you a Chinese song called Xie Xie Ni. Xie Xie Ni means thank you. This song in Chinese means we're thankful for everyone's effort. The world is more beautiful when everyone's appreciated. We hope that you can understand Chinese through our hand gestures. Uh, our pianist, Su, she's a sophomore. We are juniors in Chinese 3, and we hope you enjoy our performance. Xie xie.
te doy mi corazón y una rosa, te agradezco por todo el amor, eh, eres mi ángel que guía mi camino y por ti el mundo es mucho más bello. I am the IB coordinator at Snowden International, this Denise Velasca, and I want to recognize the 31 seniors who took on the challenge and the excellence of the IB program. Six of those students accepted and completed all of the assessments to earn themselves the title IB Diploma Candidates. Will those students please stand as I call your name? <clears throat> Hazel McLaughlin. Liet Wen, Sh Shavina Geraldo, Carlos Chavez, Fatima El Ruel, and Erica Friedman. Beautiful work. Thank you. Will the following students please come and receive special awards and scholarships selected by the Snowden community. Please note these students do not know that they have been awarded these scholarships. So, Franklin Medal, Joaquin Senna Reeves. Franklin Medal, Erica Freeman. <laughs> the Boston Teachers Union Scholarship recipients Carolyn Dixon Boston, the Boston Teachers Union Scholarship, Jai Lai. And now the Weber Scholarships. Recipients of the Weber Scholarship are Laura Lagual,
Emmanuel Wave. Marquise Miller. And Alyssa Timas. And now, the moment that we have been waiting for. For four strenuous yet pleasurable years, the following young men and women have fulfilled the requirements of Snowden International and the Boston Public Schools. Ms. Poirier and Ms. Daria Jean, will you please have the honor? Congratulations, class of 2022. We start with Hazel McLaughlin. Nam Viet Huyen. Carolina Ahire. Caden Allen Bernard. Salah Amour. Eduardo Aquino Gonzalez. Uma Balde, who's not with us. Amani Batista Ramirez. Omari Brooks. Javari Brown Brothers. Chantel Caceres. Rayshon Carrasquillo. Joel Sapita Johnson. Chavez Eric Colon Santana Fraylen Corona Marison Dawkins 
Brian Dixon, Boston. Fatima El Rul. Caleb Espaya. Richard Evans. Agdas Fadil El Saeed. Kafia Fajaldo. Mariah Figueroa. Oh, I skipped some more. Sorry. Amani Faustin. Oops. Erica Freeman. Joel Garcia. Jaren Jennings. Chris Maldi Gonzalez. Gladys Gonzalez. Carlos Guevara Orema. Ariana Giddy. Shervina Waldo. Brian Hernandez. <laughs> Jenny Huen Michelle Jacks Loa Lagua Virginia Lathrop, who's not here with us. Huh? Okay. Stephen Lynn. Okay. Jai Lee. Congratulations! Shayna Little. Tavion Lopes. Kayla Lord. Kayla Lord. Angela Martinez. Sarah Martinez. Vondell Martinez. Christian Matos. <laughs> Gerard McClanahan.
McKees Miller. Shania Minor. Cam Nguyen. Yotuel Pena. <laughs> Laura Alarcon. Laura Alarcon. <laughs> Ramias Peters. Kimmy Fung. Alkira Pulhos. Jaciel Ramirez. Tatiana Reyes Gutierrez. Oscar Malara Rivera. <laughs> Isaiah Robinson. <laughs> Ashley Rodriguez Portillo. Rodriguez Anayan Rodriguez Ayana Rowell Francisco Sanchez Garcia Caleb Sanderson. <laughs> China Neve Scale. Joaquin Santa Reeves. Marcia Smith. Kimberly Sorto. Victoria Sosa. <laughs> Alyssa Timis. Araceli Velasquez. Brian Vidal. Rafi Vo. <laughs> Brianna Wellington. <laughs> Emmanuel Waith. <laughs> Felicia Yun. Xiao Xin Zhang.
Well, she... <laughs> congratulations, congratulations, class of 2022. Congratulations. So I would like to invite the audience to sing, lift every voice and sing. So please stand and, lift and join us in singing, lift every voice and sing. So that concludes the graduation ceremony, ceremony for the class of 2022. Again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.